Congratulations on the purchase of your new Tenant Model T7 Rider Scrubber. Not only will your machine perform well with its highly efficient floor cleaning systems the day you receive it, but for a long time to come. This operator training video will be presented in sections. How the machine works, controls and instrumentation, preparing to scrub, scrubbing with your machine, draining and cleaning your machine, and battery maintenance requirements. The safety labels that appear on the machine indicate important information you need to be aware of when operating the machine. One label located on the seat panel reads, Warning! Batteries emit hydrogen gas. Explosion or fire can result. Keep sparks and open flame away. Keep covers open when charging. Look for other safety labels on the machine and follow their instructions to protect yourself and the machine. It is the operator's responsibility to read and understand the operator's manual and to follow safety and operational instructions. How the machine works. The machine solution or water tank, scrub brushes, squeegee, vacuum fan and recovery tank work together to effectively clean dirty floors. When using the conventional scrubbing systems, water and detergent from the solution tank flow to the floor through a solution valve. The brushes, along with the detergent and water solution, emulsify the grime on the floor. As the machine propels forward, the squeegee wipes the dirty solution from the floor and the suction created by the vacuum fan draws the dirty solution into the recovery tank. Controls and Instrumentation the steering wheel controls the path of machine travel. The directional switch controls the forward or reverse direction of the machine. The propel pedal controls the speed of the machine. The brake pedal slows and stops the machine. Touch buttons on the control panel direct the machine's scrubbing functions. From left to right, we will explain how they allow you to control the machine's operations. The one-step scrub button turns the preset scrub functions on and off. Once you have set the desired scrub functions, this is the only button you need to press to start and stop scrubbing with your machine. The vacuum fan squeegee button turns the vacuum fan on or off and raises and lowers the rear squeegee. The brush pressure buttons control the scrub brush pressure. Under normal conditions, the brush pressure should be set to the minimum setting with only the bottom light illuminated. Under heavier grime conditions, the brush pressure can be set to the medium setting with only two lights illuminated, or the maximum setting with all three lights illuminated. Travel speed, floor and grime conditions will affect scrubbing performance. With the one-step scrub button on, press either the brush pressure increase plus button or the decrease minus button to set the scrubbing pressure for the conditions. For longer brush life, start with the lower brush pressure light lit and increase the pressure until floor cleaning results are satisfactory. The machine will remember the new pressure setting and will default to that setting when the machine is powered off and on again. When scrubbing in conventional scrubbing mode, the solution flow rate buttons control the solution flow to the brushes. Under normal soilage conditions, the solution flow rate should be set to the lowest setting with only the bottom light illuminated. Under heavier grime conditions, the solution flow rate can be adjusted to a higher setting with two or three lights illuminated. Travel speed and floor conditions will affect scrubbing performance. With the one-step scrub button on, Press either the Solution Increase button, which is the plus button, or the Solution Decrease button, which is the minus button, to set the solution flow level for the conditions. The machine will remember the new solution flow setting and will default to this setting when the machine is powered off and then on. The machine will operate for a longer time if the brush pressure and solution flow settings are in the economy settings. The machine is operating in economy mode when the bottom lights for both the brush pressure and solution low settings are on. Directly in front of the operator are indicator lights. From left to right, these lights indicate the following machine operating conditions. 
The solution tank empty indicator comes on when the solution or water tank is empty. When this happens, the scrub functions are disabled. If necessary, press the one-step scrub button for an additional minute of operation to pick up standing water or other non-flammable solution on the floor. The recovery tank full indicator comes on when the recovery tank is full. When this happens, the scrub functions are disabled. If necessary, press the one-step scrub button for an additional minute of operation to pick up standing water or other non-flammable solution on the floor. The battery discharge indicator shows the remaining charge level of the batteries. When the batteries are fully charged, all five lights are illuminated. As the batteries discharge, the lights go out until only the left light is blinking. When the left light blinks, the scrubbing functions will shut off to alert the operator of the low battery charge condition. The machine will still propel, so you can drive it to the charging station and recharge the batteries. Note, do not charge batteries more often than necessary. Excessive charging could reduce the life of the batteries. After the low battery charge indicator starts flashing, you can still press the one-step scrub button for an additional minute of operation to pick up standing water or other non-flammable solution. If the fault indicator on the far right of the indicator panel comes on, there is a fault detected with either the propelling motor, vacuum fan motor, or brush motors. If this light comes on, refer to the table in the manual to determine the cause for the fault or failure and the suggested remedy. If you are traveling forward and the horn automatically sounds, a propelling system fault or failure has been detected and the machine will stop propelling. Refer to the Propel System Troubleshooting table in the manual to determine the cause for the fault or failure and the suggested remedy. Other machine performance troubleshooting tables can be found in the operation manual in addition to other valuable basic troubleshooting information. On the right side of the operator's control panel is an emergency stop button. The emergency stop button halts all power to the machine in case of an emergency. Press the button to halt the machine power. To restart the machine, turn the emergency stop button to the right. Then turn the on-off switch to the off position and then to the on position. Note, the emergency stop button must not be used for normal stopping because premature wear to the parking brake may occur. To the right of the emergency stop button is a directional control switch. Place the switch in the forward position to propel forward and the reverse position to propel in reverse. Note, the horn will sound in reverse as a safety warning device. This does not indicate a problem in the system. Press the horn button to sound the horn. An on-off key switch is used to control machine power. Turn the key to the right to turn the machine's power on and to the left to turn it off. An hour meter records the number of hours the machine has been powered on. This information is useful when servicing the machine. The hour meter is located under the seat. Also under the seat, next to the hour meter, are two circuit breakers. Circuit breakers are resettable electrical circuit protection devices that stop the flow of current in the event of a circuit overload. If a circuit breaker trips, allow it to cool and then press the reset button. If the circuit breaker cannot be reset or trips again, contact a qualified service person. Preparing to scrub. To get longer life and better performance out of your machine, there are a few daily checks that should be performed before you start cleaning. Check the battery fluid and charge level. Check the tank cover seals for damage and wear.
clean the vacuum fan inlet filter. Check the squeegees for damage, wear, and deflection adjustment. Check the condition of the scrubbing brushes. Remove any string, banding, plastic wrap, or other debris wrapped around the brushes. Check the vacuum hose for debris or blockage. Check the brakes and steering for proper operation. Drain and clean the recovery tank. Check the service records to determine maintenance requirements. Your machine is equipped with a water fill port on the right rear side of the machine. You can also fill your machine through the opening under the floorboard or under the recovery tank. Warning! Flammable materials can cause an explosion or fire. Do not use flammable materials in the tanks. For conventional scrubbing, open the solution tank fill port and partially fill it with water. The water should not exceed 60 degrees centigrade or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Pour the required amount of detergent into the solution tank according to mixing instructions on the bottle. Then continue filling the solution tank with warm water until the water level is just below the fill opening. Attention! For conventional scrubbing, follow the mixing and handling instructions for the recommended cleaning detergent. Machine damage due to improper detergent usage will void the manufacturer's warranty. The machine can be equipped with scrub brushes or cleaning pads. Always replace brushes and pads in sets. Otherwise, one brush or pad could be more aggressive, causing unsatisfactory machine performance. To replace the scrub brushes or pad driver, first stop the machine on a level surface, make sure the scrub head is in the raised position, and then turn the machine on-off key switch to off. Pull the pin from the side squeegee retainer pivot and move the side squeegee retainer pivot toward the front of the machine. Then pull the side squeegee toward the rear of the machine to access the scrub brushes or pad drivers. Squeeze the spring clip on top of the scrub brush or pad driver and lower it to the floor. If installing a pad driver and the pad needs to be rotated or replaced, squeeze the spring clip together to remove the center disc. Flip or replace the scrub pad and center it on the pad driver. Reinstall the center disc to secure the pad in place on the pad driver. Place the new scrub brush or the pad driver onto the drive hub and lift it into place. Then ensure it is securely mounted on the hub. Close the side squeegee and the retainer pivot. Then insert the pin completely through the bottom of the assembly. If the rear squeegees are worn or damaged, they need to be replaced or rotated. To do so, remove the vacuum hose from the squeegee frame and then remove the frame from the machine by turning the mounting knobs counterclockwise and moving the frame toward the rear of the machine. Loosen the two outer knobs on the rear squeegee assembly. Loosen the rear squeegee retaining band tension latch and remove the retaining band. Now you can remove the rear and front squeegee blade from the assembly. Next, install the new front squeegee blade or rotate the existing blade to a new edge. Be sure the holes in the front squeegee blade are hooked onto the tabs on the front blade clamp. and then install the new rear squeegee blade or rotate the existing blade to a new edge.
Be sure the holes in the squeegee blade are hooked onto the tabs on the squeegee assembly. Reinstall the rear squeegee retaining band and secure the band tension latch. Finally, reinstall the rear squeegee on the squeegee mount bracket. Secure all four knobs. and install the squeegee suction hose. The squeegee deflection is set at the factory. If the squeegee blade needs adjustment, see the adjusting rear squeegee blade deflection section of the manual. Before scrubbing with the machine, pick up debris and pieces of wire, string, twine, etc. that could become wrapped around the scrub brush. Also, pre-sweep the area to prevent streaking. Scrubbing with your machine. Once again, for safety, do not operate the machine unless the operator's manual is read and understood. To start scrubbing, first turn the on-off key switch to the on position and confirm the required scrub settings are set before scrubbing. Next, press the one-step scrub button. The light on the button will illuminate and all the preset scrubbing functions will turn on. If necessary while scrubbing, you can open the control panel cover and adjust the brush pressure and solution flow setting to match your scrubbing conditions. The machine can scrub in both forward or reverse. Place the directional switch in the desired direction and depress the propel speed control pedal to begin scrubbing. Note, when traveling in reverse, the horn will sound, the squeegee automatically raises, and the vacuum fan shuts off after a short delay. Plan your scrubbing in advance. Try to arrange long runs with minimum stopping and starting and clean an entire floor or section at one time. Release the propel pedal to stop the machine. Scrubbing functions will stop and the automatic parking brake will engage as the machine stops. The brake pedal can be used to control the machine if quicker stopping is needed or if operating on an incline. For safety, when using the machine, go slow on inclines and slippery surfaces and do not scrub with the machine on inclines exceeding 7% or 4 degrees. The machine can also be used to pick up water or non-flammable liquid spills without scrubbing. Warning: Flammable materials or reactive metals can cause an explosion or fire. Do not pick up flammable materials or reactive metals. To pick up water or non-flammable liquid spills, check to make sure that the light next to the one-step scrub button is off. The one-step scrub button must not be activated for you to use the machine in this way. Next, press the vacuum fan button. The light above the vacuum fan button will turn on, the squeegee will lower, and the vacuum fan will start operating. You can now pick up the water or other non-flammable liquid. Draining and cleaning your machine. When your floor cleaning is finished, or when the recovery tank full indicator light comes on, the recovery tank should be drained and cleaned. Drive the machine to a solution disposal drain and turn the machine on-off key switch to off. Remove the recovery tank drain hose from the hook on the rear of the tank. While holding the hose up, Remove the plug and then slowly lower the drain hose to the floor drain or sink. Next, tilt the operator seat forward and hook the seat latch into place to hold the seat in the raised position and then lift the recovery tank cover to flush the inside of the recovery tank and rinse the float located inside the recovery tank with clean water. Note, do not use steam to clean the tanks. Excessive heat can damage the tanks and other components. Remove and clean the vacuum fan filter with a low pressure water hose. After the tank is drained and cleaned, replace the recovery tank drain hose cap, mount the drain hose onto the mounting clip, and close the recovery tank cover. Remove the solution tank drain hose. While holding the hose up, remove the plug and then slowly lower the drain hose to the floor drain or sink. You can clean the front of the solution tank through the front access port located under the front solution tank cover and floorboard. 
Once the recovery tank is empty, tilt the recovery tank back to access the solution tank and flush the solution tank. Also, rinse the float sensor and screen filter located inside the back part of the solution tank. Carefully push the recovery tank forward to close the solution tank, unhook the seat latch, and lower the operator's seat. Replace the solution tank drain hose cap and mount the drain hose back onto the mounting clip. Battery maintenance requirements. Charging the batteries. When the battery meter begins to flash, stop scrubbing and recharge the batteries. Attention! To prolong the life of the batteries and to provide optimum machine performance, only recharge the batteries after a total of 30 minutes of use or more. The following charging instructions are intended for battery chargers supplied with the machine. Only use a battery charger with the required specifications to prevent battery damage. Transport the machine to a well-ventilated area for charging. Warning! Fire or explosion hazard. Batteries emit hydrogen gas. Keep sparks and open flame away. Keep the battery compartment open when charging. Park the machine on a level surface and turn the key off. Before charging the batteries, check the electrolyte level in each battery cell. The electrolyte level, A, should slightly cover the battery plates, B. Add distilled water as needed. Do not overfill. The fluid will expand while charging and may overflow. Install the cell caps before charging. Connect the charger's AC power supply cord to a properly grounded receptacle. Connect the charger's DC cord to the machine's battery receptacle. Raise the seat and secure the latch during charging to allow any gases created by the charging batteries to escape from the battery compartment. The charger will automatically begin charging and shut off when fully charged. Note, the machine will not operate once the battery charger is connected. Attention! Do not disconnect the charger's DC cord from the machine's receptacle when the charger is operating. Arcing may result. If the charger must be interrupted during charging, disconnect the AC power supply cord first. After charging, check the electrolyte level A again. The level should be approximately 1 centimeter or 5 sixteenths inch from the bottom of the fill port B. Add distilled water if needed, but do not overfill. ECH2O is a technology that electrically converts plain tap water into a powerful cleaner without chemicals. If your machine is equipped with the ECH2O technology, you will see the ECH2O logo on the side of your machine. To use the ECH2O technology, first fill the water tank with clean water. Next, turn on the key switch. Then press the ECH2O switch to enable the technology. Now press the large green one step scrub button and start scrubbing. While scrubbing, observe the ECH2O light on the control panel. If you see a solid green light, the ECH2O technology is functioning properly. If the ECH2O light is flashing red or is solid red, refer to the operator's manual for more information and follow your company's service procedure guidelines. Performing the daily operational checks, making needed adjustments and following the proper operating procedures for your tenant T7 rider floor scrubber will ensure that it will perform in top condition throughout its useful lifetime.